So let's uh, start recording again. Um, we are we are on. We are live. Uh, I'm going to play one of my Transformers things here and do a commentary track. Oh, the audio turned way down. So let's see. We're going to do Battle of the Alicom, which has never had an audio commentary track. So, so I'm going to play. I'm going to assume that it's going to work, but it might not. So here goes to Battle of the Alicom, and uh, we are going into the movie right now. Okay, this is trans. Trans. Not to be confused with transsexual, but trans. Battle of the Alicom. Uh, yeah, so... Oh, wow. Okay, Catacol. Okay. Uh, volume... So, yeah, I'll, I'll just, uh, large spacecraft. Okay, so, what I'm gonna do is... With the audio turned way down here, I'm doing this. I said Lego ships and Star Trek. Oh no! <laughs> so yeah, the, the uh, we had a crappy JVC camera back then, and the and the only way to do like uh, uh, it was the focus puller was all screwing up in in it. So I had this ingenious idea of taking, uh, having taken apart a a magnifying glass, and I used that to pull the focus in on the. Uh, uh, the transformer. Unfortunately, I didn't hold it steady, so it just looks like he's underwater, which is kind of funny. And apparently, what's going on? I'll just have to tell you what's going on, because then, then, because we can't actually use the actual audio in in the movie because, uh, well, reasons. Uh, yeah, when we get to the later ones, it'll become evident that uh, we can't do that. Well, this is Battle of the Alcom, and uh, this is the Lego base. Uh, have we used music that we shouldn't have used? We can't put that on YouTube. So this is a... So all you're going to see is this stuff with commentary tracks over it. So, because uh, we wanted to show where this all came from long before the mushes. And here we have uh, uh, the Constructicons attempting to rebuild the SDF Autobot. And I guess to make him a Decepticon. Uh... <laughs> Okay, th this was made a little after Transformers the movie, so I think December of 86 is actually when this was, even though it says 87, um, because it has, like, post-Christmas toys in it, um, but not yet. Uh, it has, well, some of them. Stunicons, Aerobot gift set. Yeah, Stunicons came separately. They came from Mervyn's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we had a, we had a, uh, it was a Mervyn's, yeah. Yeah, back in the day, I always thought it was kind of annoying that the that the Stunicons were sort of a. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I always thought it was funny that they that they had these guys done up. Uh, that they, they they never made them the proper scale to each other. It wasn't until like twenty years later that they. Like they made the combiner war almost twenty years later. When they made the combiner wars ones, they sort of downscaled the other ones to match the combiner wars ones and made them the right scale. Uh, even now, they have a problem with that because if you have your plastic, how much plastic you can use, that kind of thing, and uh, and they they where it would be pro cost prohibitive to make you know larger, super sized transformers, so make them slightly smaller. G1 sideswipe there is you know example of of that time period of being uh he's quite small they're they're all they're, they were not big they were bigger than gobots but they weren't very big oh and then they the autobot the stf autobot is this after they broke the smokestacks off <laughs> or before uh, uh, that was kind of an expensive toy um yeah <laughs> SDF Autobot. I imagine the SDF one, which is well, uh, scale-wise, was supposed to be an Autobot 
It would be bigger than Metroplex and all of them, really, because several miles tall. Uh, they never really, yeah, the scale is weird on these guys. Because technically the jet ones should be way taller than the car ones because they're like Tomcats and, and F-14s and things. Uh, we had Legos thrown in there, too. This is in that weird transition between Lego playsets and and the, and the Carta and all that was doing it at the same time. So this is during the Carta thing. All at the same time. Um, it's a Robotech Battle Pod made by Macro, made Matchbox. Yeah, I got the battle pod. Uh, oh, I remember that bench. The toy chest. Oh, man. <laughs> and, 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 of course, the director, writer, producer, there's no script, um, uh, is just 17 in this. So you can accuse my... Uh, you can excuse my... <laughs> my... Uh, uh, I want to do a Transformers thing because there weren't very, too many reruns because the movie was coming out. They were going to completely jump ahead to 2005 in, the, in that universe. Multiverse was a mysterious new thing. Mush did not exist. Carta. Oh my goodness, this is funny. Uh, <laughs> there goes that lens thing again. Oh, um, yeah, that, yeah. Like slamming that jet fire toy around, and that's one of the '84 ones, so it probably had a bad backpack. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, there were two different versions. There was the '84 and '85 one. The '84 one had backpack would fall off and get loose. The '85 one would uh, do other things. Also, there was an earlier print of the '84 one that had a little little macro symbols on it, and that was very rare. Um, that had both. Had QA issues, so we have the Legos. Yeah, it was still a thing. Legos are still a thing. The great nephew Donovan is now twelve. Look all kinds of Le they, Legos are very sophisticated now, and they have they have whole cars. It looks like a car, but it's Legos. It looks like a ship, but it's Legos. It's like back then, the Lego space set, the Lego city set, that was kind of it. Um, the Lego. They had a Lego Spaceman set, um, which they referenced in the Lego movie. My idea. I suggested that. Referenced that. Very old school thing in there. I was not involved in the movie, but hey, it was it was online. It was known. This is Cal Cats, actually. Yes. And, and in honor of that, the Purr Beast was also included in the Lego Ninjago movie. Uh, because they saw our Purr Beast video. Not on our website, but somebody else uploaded it to theirs, and it went viral. It wasn't our original <laughs> Bastards. Anyway, so yeah, so this is way before the internet stuff. And and, and there was commentary on the other one was uh this this guy is the grandfather of, of Transformers fan films. This, this guy was doing them before they were even a thing. This is like the eighties. This is like nineteen eighty seven. This is like late eighty six, eighty early eighty seven. And it's really, really incoherent and weird, but yeah, the SDF-3 as, as a city would be bigger than Metroplex. Bigger than Fort Maximus, which came later. Um, he would be able to, like... Actually, the toy was about the same size as Metroplex. As a toy. But, yeah, that thing was expensive back then. I think that was, like, 100 bucks. <laughs> what am I doing to it? <laughs> but the smokestacks did not get broken off by me specifically. That came later. That was actually Jim, Jim Takan, and he decided to body slam the bed because he was we were into wrestling and stuff. So he body slammed the bed, and the toy was like next to it. it sort of the bed came down onto the toy. <laughs> yes. Um. Mm. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so we have. So they really killed Jetfire, I guess. I'm not really sure. What I was doing here. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah. Botic ship. Oh, okay, I don't need to line up exactly what's going on because I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, the Legos back then were still cheap. Even even when um, Danny at this point was a nephew was a, like a little brother. Uh, he had the Legos too, but but but. Power Rangers kid. He shows up later. He gets lines in the later stuff. Trans 2. 
<laughs> but but here he's like one so he doesn't get any lines in this one uh but yeah uh but now he's in his 30s and he has a kid and his kid likes lego so pass it on the master builder thing you know. but back then you hit you in order to be a master builder you had to literally come up with they got play sets for everything back then back then you had to do it yourself uh, you couldn't just buy oh i want a star wars play set that looks like star wars but it's legos you, you couldn't do that um <laughs> now playmobile does the star trek stuff but but Lego does the uh, Star Wars stuff, the Disney stuff, and Harry Potter stuff. Whatever. We'll cross over with uh, Warner Brothers there. But here we have... Yeah, this was not studio-driven, clearly. This is a fan film um, done by a teenager in the 80s during the run of Transformers. And I thought it would be interesting to do a commentary on something that never had one on the original G1 Transformers. Um, I guess set during the 20 years between 285 and 2005. <laughs> but, but, uh, it was never quite uh, Oakland. Ah, uh, the Oakland jokes. Okay, here's what's going on. It's like, customarily, there's like, the, if they're from like a part of the world where, where the city that gets make, made fun of, you know, like the Cleveland, let's make fun of Cleveland if you're from Ohio, you're from Cleveland, California from the Bay Area, you're not making fun of San Francisco. You're making fun of Oakland. So you make fun of It's kind of me, but <laughs> that's what's going on. It's in Oakland. They're going to have a battle in Oakland. And what's funny about this is is that this, a lot of the elements of these stories were rewritten as Transformers meets Robotech, Transtech, about, uh, yeah, 13 years later in 2001 or so. 2001, 2006, 2007. Uh, we did another, we did it all, we rewrote it all over again. Mark's cards, and I did the whole thing over again. Adam Brown and Sean Yeager, Cal Cat and Mark's cards. Uh, so, so, so we did the whole thing over again. Is that. So there's elements of those stories, the genesis of those stories in this. Whereas back then, I had no idea what filming was, or lighting apparently, was in this scene. And, uh, and I didn't bother changing up the lighting, or trying to patch this, or cut out all the doobly gribblies this is from the uh, apparently a 2012 reissue of the of the uh, 2005 prints from the dvd collection which I, I found again in the collection and looked at and said, oh, this is this is from that uh this is a direct port of that dvd it looks like from the video uh this is what aired uh yeah the failed child star this this this, this is probably why uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so there's not even any other voices in here it's just this weird surreal sort of transformer thing um uh, this is about an hour i think off so so yeah uh the, the battle of the alicom alicom allison strawberg the alicom that was refined later uh, and no, it's the Transformers the movie that I was thinking of because the giant robot that shows up later is clearly Unicron. But yeah, we can build a Unicron. They, they didn't make them. There were kids at school and on the bus back then that claimed they had one, but they, they lied. They didn't make any of them. They they later released when the internet started years later in, in the late in the early mid nineties. The internet officially got fast enough so you could watch video uh, in the early nineties. It was still slow, and you could, and people had pictures and stuff of uh, uh, the first thing to appear on the internet was uh, porn and Star Trek and Star Wars. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, here is here is a G-rated Transformer. Oh, stop motion attempt that didn't work. I see this is actually cleaned up a little. So this is a 2012 print. I tried to clean it up as best as possible, but there are definitely problems. Use that same camera to make Star Crackers. Later on in the 90s. Uh, yeah, and uh, here we have... Yeah, the Stunicons and the Aerial Bots were way too small, though. They were like... The Transformers were roughly like maybe five inches, and the and the Aerial Bots and Stunicons were GoBot-sized. So like three, three and a quarter inches. So it's like they didn't match up at all. I mean, they, they would have been bigger. Oh, it's the... Uh, it's a joke that Swoop gets bigger. Yeah, they they still took the weapons box thing. Yeah, I don't know if it comes later. 
Oh, they rigged up Starscream so he would, like, have a super mode. Because they're basically evil or something. But, but yeah, Swoop came down. That was a uh, birthday present, I think, at the time. Sideswipe there is my first Transformer. Uh, he was a, it was a present from Martha, my sister. And uh, she started it. <laughs> it just never ended. So, <laughs> Yeah. So that Swoop toy broke immediately upon opening it up. Apparently that particular issue of the red chest Swoop, that's why it's rare, is because it's a piece of shit. <laughs> And, 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 yeah, he, he, and just, <laughs> head just be, flew off. Crazy glued it back on. That's a piece of junk. So I guess the gag here is that they're going to uh, get together. And, yeah, and, and STF Autobot's only about 10 feet tall there. But compared to him, Sideswipe is like maybe 30 feet tall, probably. He's like a hundred feet tall. Good him. Something like that. Bigger than all of them. And the pact was just because I didn't have an Optimus Prime yet. <laughs> That's the only reason. And I don't really want to rip off what's out from the other one. Because, um, what are we talking about? Yeah, um, I don't think, but yeah, well, I, so what? Battle of the Alhambra. The Ross McComb. Clearly, I liked Jill Ross, but never would have included her. <laughs> so, yeah. She was a character at Fine Hill High School for kids with learning disabilities and junior high. There's a great school on the other side. There are equivalents of that all over the world today. Back then, only one. Sal Sound Fe. Yeah. But that isn't the reason this doesn't work. The reason this doesn't work is because, because I had no idea what I was doing. I hadn't had any film school experience or anything. Although that version of Starstream, that weird transformation, is kind of cool looking. I was sort of predating Cyclonus there. Put his wings right in reverse. That actually looks cool. They, they should have done more of those. They, they did um, later on in uh, Transformers Energon, I think. They did something like that. The Bat Chick, who was uh, a Rakshi in our series. <laughs> the Mush. But yeah, um, hmm. sweep back wing thing. Similar to the G.I. Joe um, vehicle. To the X-31, the X-30 thing. Conquest X-30. Oh no. It's the giant clunky Lego robot. And it's made from city Legos and space Legos. Little blue ones with the dots. You know. You know there was a nephew of David who was my age. The brother being, a half brother being at the time in his well now he's in his late 70s but at the time, late 40s. So like so, like, there was uh, late, late 30s at that time. Yeah. Because I'm in the 50s now. <laughs> so, yeah, like, but, but yeah, David and I were roughly the same age. I believe he's on the internet as well, on YouTube, under a pseudonym. I won't say who it is to find him. Um, but, but here we have... Uh, <laughs> you know, Skyfire had this, like... Well, he's a Pine Hill student. You see. Um, Skyfire was going to risk his life to stop the alien. Which is very Robotech of him. Very, very, um, it was space kamikaze thing. Uh, uh <laughs> which was honorable to, to, the, to them at the time, but yeah, back in World War II, they had uh, kamikazes. But they were, they were losing good pilots by doing that. So, uh, yeah, during uh, Japan. So, uh, I guess it was honorable to them. It didn't seem like it. Just saying. <laughs> He's all, let's get to work now that we've been fixed, I guess. I guess it didn't hurt him that much to, to do the kamikaze crash thing. Uh, yeah, um, it's just odd. The Robotechs did that on the show, though, so sometimes. 
Um, but usually it was kind of edited out or <laughs> made to not be that because yeah, it could have been offensive. Uh, Robotech aired at the same time. So yeah, you have this sort of I don't know. Uh, yeah, you see my hands in the shot all the time because like one guy holding a camera and one guy doing a thing. So there's yeah, there's is it the Matrix. <laughs> it's got the Matrix. <laughs> Uh, 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 yeah, uh, Battle of the Alicom. You don't even know there's not really a bad guy in here. He's just sort of, the bad guys are the Decepticons, but the one building the giant robot, who is that? I don't even think Strawberg's in this, really. This isn't a, this is going to show up, but. Strawberg is also a Pine Hill student who I apparently didn't like. Um, but yes, uh. Uh, at the time. Let's see. I don't think I spelled his name right either. No, for some reason I made Skyfire a leader of the... Oh, when did that happen? <laughs> I don't think Jetfire would want to do that. But, wow, okay, focus is going back. <laughs> Just amazing. They made a weird ass mode to like a Minosaur there too. Gave him a little base. Oh, he did have a base mode. So did why did what the the oddity is here that they have this giant SDF Autobot thing, and they sent Jetfire to to battle the robot and almost die, but not the giant robot city ship thing that could have actually taken it. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Clearly Robotech was around at this point, too. You know, Robotech started in, the, in here, in America, in 85. We had some timeline problems with some of our later on-location stuff in the history, because it, we didn't realize it started. There was a record of when it started. And it was earlier that that happened, uh, in some cases. So, yeah, it didn't make sense when we... You know, historical database thing. Um, but here... Uh, yeah. You know, I was inventing a multiverse without even knowing it at the time. So this is my version of Transformers. and Yeah, and in that, there's a pack of Autobots. And it was a multiverse. It's a sideways thing going on. Yeah. Abrams thing. Not Abrams, though. And why is he... Okay, there's the... Okay, the aerial bot. I think this actually jumped ahead a few days. To this other scene. <laughs> and they're all talking with the same voice. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, well, there you kind of did a slightly lower voice. That does sound like early cowpoke. Mm, it does. And the jet fire sounds like Silly Kelly. So. And Billy Allen. Yeah. <laughs> those, those characters. There's three voices there. They're not quite distinct yet. The poor cowpoke, though. <laughs> what? And now the okay. Now the the mothership decides. All right, I'm gonna fight the big robot. But now Jetfire's all. I don't want to let him kill himself, so I'm gonna fly over there. Uh, there was the the gag here is is kind of a kind of a dark humor because at Pine Hill. Because of learning disabilities and bad kids as well, <laughs> and troubled kids and all kinds of, kids. um, it was weird because it was it was uh, noted in the historical archives that there were there were at least three or four instances of somebody somebody claiming they were going to cack themselves at some point to get attention mainly, but some of them were generally screwed up. So some of them tried, and that was actually the kind of sad. So I was not spoofing them, but rather spoofing. The idea of them being depressed in, in school, and uh, that that you shouldn't do that basically. But I didn't know how to articulate that. I didn't, uh, didn't have the empathy quite right for that. So I was just basically, oh, this guy's gonna do this and that and the story. Uh, yeah, I didn't I didn't quite get that 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 that's not that's not being subtle. That's not being nice. <laughs> I wasn't trying to be mean though. <laughs> like it was just oh, I just didn't get that you don't. But like put that in your transformer story, you know, <laughs> suicidal transformer. 
Why is that in there? Why would the SDF Autobot do that? Did he just blast the Decepticons with his cannon? And then he got blasted. Ah, I turned the light sensitivity up on the camera. Great. Oh, it's an explosion. Yeah, that's it. That is the sheet on the bed. Yeah, there's no sex. Weapons box thing. Was the weapons box thing later or was it earlier? I think it was earlier. <laughs> this is so dumb. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is so Oh. Gotta love it. Menace horn. Ah. Look. Oh, they cut a line out. Take over universe. This is like, it's weird. It's like this is, this is not just trans. This is trans two, which came later, nineties. And something like that happens. So this like predates and predicts stuff that's gonna happen later, by accidents. I think I was trying to reinvent this idea over and over again. In the nineties with trans two, uh, we got to the point where we made a movie. We'll have to get to that one. Um, yeah, uh, the uh, city that time forgot. MC Kim, the kimchi character, will be narrating that one. Uh, but yeah, this, this is, this is. Um, uh, I figured I'd do this one because I'm the one that did it. <laughs> oh, it's interesting that I don't think. I mean, the Tim and Jim and John were around from the original cast at the time, but I don't think they're in this. I think it's just like referencing sort of where they are. Well, they did a, they did show up in Reunion of the Cities, which is a little later. They did show up in that. Um, at least Tim did. Jim did. And in Trans and Trans Two and uh, Till Aller One and yes, we did a Till Aller One too. Other fans did a Till Aller One as well. We did one. We all recognized some of the elements of this. He appeared in uh, Shared Hallucinations as well, which was done later, based on these stories. So, so yeah, uh, Trans Tech 2 and then uh, Trans Tech and then Shared Hallucinations in 2021. So, <laughs> so we keep remaking this. You know, we got some Robotech stuff slated to remake the Myriad Saga that never got made. I wrote, I wrote the Sentinels Myriad Saga. I rewrote... My version of the Sentinels based on some other fan stories or about Transformers. They'll do that later. But we're, we're going to go back to this. Um, I didn't write the Sentinels. I wrote a fanfic of it. Yeah. Based on other people's stuff. This is all my original stuff, though. I was just coming up with, like, my own weird... His Starscream with his funny wings. Yeah. Why did Menasaur kill Starscream? Or he's going to kill Starscream. Thorough creep. Oh, me crush you. <laughs> Where's Megatron? I just I didn't have one. I had a Galvatron later on. Megatron. And some of the later ones were actually Tim's toys. So, yeah. But that's later. Let's do this one now. So yeah, I guess what happened here is we had uh, Menasaur fighting Starscream. And Swoop has clearly Frote Guy. Their size bass speeches before that. That is a fairly good Chris Lotta imitation. Even back then, that that actually that voice actually works. Probably because like puberty. That voice actually fairly decent Chris Lotta imitation. But here we have uh, not sure what I'm doing there. I guess I wanted to show like the sunrise. Yeah, that's probably what I'm doing. Oh, no, and then I used some sort of, what the hell? Uh, oh, it's a Lego City thing. Why didn't I just fix the focus puller? What was I doing? Lego ship thing that came down from Earth. Oh, is this the, uh, the, this, this predates the, uh, building of the JWS cat, the John Williams cat. That guy wasn't even around anymore at this point. 
He had left in 83. And briefly, we found him in 80, 89. And he gave KETS back to us. We used KETS again. Uh, this is Catico, though. Yeah, so his name is John Williams Cat. Yeah, the original John Williams. And uh, no, Mark's Cars was not the replacement for John Williams. <laughs> That's silly. But no, that, that, uh, yeah, he was not in this. I don't know. Dude. Odd. I wonder if, like, okay, I think the Carta, the Battle of the Carta, happens in here too, so. Uh, I tended to make these really quickly, over the course of the, the thing. And it was on video originally. And this is an, a heavily edited version that's taken out the uh, as many gonks as possible without losing the story. And it's still baffling. Um, what was I do oh it looks shimmery and well it would have worked if i had thought about what i'd uh did the focus puller work yeah that clunky heavy video camera oh my goodness i guess it's supposed to be a robot it's legos meets the transformers hey why not um more than it's alicom meets the transformers so it's legos meets the transformers City Legos and Space Legos meets the Transformers. The first Lego movie. Yes. Long before the Lego movie even existed. Watching the first Lego movie. The Lego movie. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not connected to Chris Pratt in any way. We're only on the same wavelength. Um. The great ship. Who built it? So you rebuilt the Alicom thing to look even weirder. Oh, it was like an escape ship, I guess. I think this scene did have David in it. He built the ship. Yeah. That's probably why the focus isn't all crappy. He's all, I'll hold that and, and you film it. Like, okay. <laughs> I think he is in this scene. I think he is. I just want to play with the Legos. I want to, There's no Transformers in the scene. It's just the Legos. We'll zoom in on him and yeah, you, you hold him. <laughs> he became the... He became the um, the prop manager slash slash uh not the the gaffer i guess holding up the pieces of the <laughs> my head is in the shot oh and you can see that it's evening outside what was i doing the admiral the admiral of space it's clearly the, the Admiral David Brown in Edinburgh. <laughs> yeah. Admiral of Space for the Plantcom. That's a reference to Planetcom. A reference to another story that I did in the 80s. 84 and 86. I'm going to reference one of my other stories and throw it in Transformers, as I often would do. So, so I, I not only did I do the first Mary Sue, I did the first really, really super self-esteem Mary Sue because I didn't have self-esteem issues. I was more more like more more like narcissistic issues. <laughs> like I am the Admiral of Space. Ah yeah. but then they would turn it around and be like an SNL sketch and it would be self effacing. The Admiral's apparently doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> he's like, Yes, I'm gonna defeat the Decepticons and Yeah, uh be yeah I don't know how to do that, but I'm gonna do it. I'll fight them off. Ah. <laughs> what? Why is Swoop fighting Minasaur? I. Now this is baffling, but then again, it's baffling. Autobots transform. I don't think we need to worry about any audio on this, though, because there's no music in the background. But yeah, this is Battle of the Alicom, and it is really, really strange. 
Mm, trans Battle of the Elecon. <laughs> I'm just I swear. He just stood there. I'm a car. You get, yeah, I get knocked in the head. Is he gonna kill Skyfire again? It was like, wow, it, that, see the death of Optimus Prime actually did affect me. <laughs> I kept putting it in here. The death of Optimus Prime, the death of Optimus Prime. <laughs> I'm going to do it with Jetfire instead. Why? <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Ooh, like indirectly. Being ironic. The funny story about that one is that. That. As a kid. Uh, that I thought it was kind of fun. Uh, fucked up. Dark. No. So, I saw that movie. Dozens of times. On video. But in the theater. Twice. And. Uh, and there was a. And there was a guy in the theater. It was like, oh, he turned Decepticon on. Oh, you like it that Optimus Prime died. Oh. And like, because it, 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 it's, I guess, a town of 70,000 people. But back then, 50,000. A small universe. And, uh, and San Jose is next to it. It's a million people. But but small universe, small theater. The Milpitas resident, apparently. Decepticon guy. Uh, the, the Transformers movie came out in 86. 21 years later, the Michael Bay movies come out. And they don't do that scene again, obviously, in that one. They did it in part two. Tried to kill him off. But but, uh, but uh, that, that that guy was in the theater. And I was in the theater watching it. And it was like, uh, uh, and, he, and, he, and he recognized me. Apparently, I made a big impression on him. <laughs> and he was older now, obviously. And it was all like, yeah, I switched sides. So it's like the Autobots now. <laughs> but yeah. Um. <laughs> But but yes, uh, and he was there for Dark of the Moon as well. But, yeah, he was destroyed. <laughs> What's wrong with Skyfire? He was destroyed. Not quite yet. I'm not dead. I just broke the backpack piece because my toy is kind of crappy. This kid is beating me, my character around too much. Gunship and the other Autobots. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am great. Oh. <laughs> I am the great Capoke. <laughs> that human. Oh, his foot. His his wheel already fell off. He's kind of a cheap piece of shit. Now, who did he get blasted by? I think it was was it the. Uh, he got bl Skyfire got blasted by the Decepticon Regun, I, I, I guess. Um, yeah, this is totally baffling, but interesting. It's very interesting. Um, it's interesting that that like Thrust is gonna fix Jetfire. Uh, I'm just not sure why. Um, <laughs> what was the Decepticon? So Thrust. Oh, they're gonna do the Transformers the movie thing. Yes, apparently this does a like a. a <laughs> so it did affect you. It did it did find uh, that Prime dies thing dramatic. Ooh, I wonder if I reference uh, GI Joe the movie in here. Probably in the next one. Oh, he's in a coma. I put that in. I put that in the other one. What's funny about that is that uh, that the they so misrepresented the Trent the the fans. At the time in the 80s, the Transformers show, let's kill the main father figure of the, the Transformers. Let's kill Optimus Prime. Um, they, they they totally misstepped that, and they wanted to introduce a bunch of new toys because the other ones are discontinued. That's the story. Some other fans have talked about that recently on the YouTube. And like, yeah, that's what happened. Uh, but but also then then they were producing G.I. Joe the movie around the same time. And th that ended up going direct-to-video into TV. It didn't end up in theaters. G.I. Joe the movie... They realized, oh shit, we shouldn't have killed Optimus Prime like that. And all those other Autobots, because the kids are all mad. They're not going to watch G.I. Joe anymore if we do that with Duke. We were going to do that with Duke. We were going to kill Duke. So basically, they show Duke getting snaked through the heart with a snake. And, uh, that's a little later in this timeline. But yes, a little later. And it's like, it's like, um, oops, uh, we better take that and change that in post. 
So the two scenes where he's apparently totally dead and gets a snake through his heart, a snake spear through his heart. And at the end, they grafted in, he's come out of a coma. He's A-OK. Like, everybody at the school was like, that's really stupid. <laughs> okay, 30 and 40 minutes in. I'm not done yet. Okay, so we have... Uh, yeah, I was talking about Optimus Prime and the Transformers. I don't know if I walked over that already, but the but the uh, idea was that the uh, the Transformers the movie they misjudged what the fans wanted. They didn't know they had a fan base. I guess <laughs> they killed Optimus Prime and in the uh, uh, freaking out hun- uh, millions of children all over the place. And uh, I was a t- young teenager, but very immature. <laughs> And um, so, uh, so that there's that, and they were producing. They were in production on GI Joe the movie. Once they realized this misstep, they realized, oh no, we're in GI Joe the movie. We're going to kill Duke, and so uh, so we got to fix that to make it like, even though we shafted him with a snake spear through his heart, and he's clearly dead, and they're clearly acting like he's dead, and they have to get revenge and go to def- destroy Cobra Law, but 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 no, at the very end, they grafted in the line. Duke's come out of his coma. Uh, he's going to be A-OK. Yeah, uh-huh. We can't only count him Duke. Oh, it's clearly dubbed over. It's clearly not Doc at headquarters. And we're making fun of that in Trans 2 by having a Trans Tech. And, and several of the other ones by having that be silly. But I think here, this is before that, before G.I. Joe the movie. It only went on in video. Anyway, didn't get in theaters. And and then there, so why does in this story I don't know why Skyfire would have the Matrix I don't know how he would get that, but uh, strangely enough uh, the later bag in the versions of the magazines Marvel and <laughs> Jay Hax is just access and all that stuff uh, later versions of the comic books uh, the most notably IDW in the two thousands. Uh, would do stuff like this all the time. Apparently, there was a god hot rod. And, uh, I'm surprised they didn't do a jet. F- I think they did do a giant jet fire one in, in one of those. He became like powerful Autobot leader. I'm sure they, yeah, I'm sure they did it once at least. And I suspect that the giant star scream in, in uh, later Transformer Cybertron was supposed to be jet fire because he wasn't acting like star scream. It's, but yeah, um, yeah, uh, which he became in this version, uh, Regis Maximus in the other version of Spaceship. Yeah, yeah, this movie clearly came. Sideswipe us prime. What the? Sideswipe us prime. Why would Sideswipe be worthy of the Matrix? <laughs> Don't become anything like Sideswipe either. Sideswipe was kind of a cocky bastard. I am now the Autobot leader. I am Sideswipe as Prime. Leader of the pack. There are a bunch of these guys. The tracks. Yeah, the tracks toy sucked too. He wouldn't stand up. And that carpet was like a low pile of carpet, but they didn't stand up too well. And I didn't think to put them on a shelf and film them that way. I thought to film them from Disney angle, from way in the, in the sky, like that on a crane. It really looks fake. <laughs> oh man, this is just this is baffling. It's the bafflingness of the movie films. I'm gonna pause it right here. I'm gonna keep recording though, though on the mic. Yes, uh, so what is that supposed to be? That, that's not even a ship. That's just a piece of Lego. What are they doing? It was filmed over the course of two or three nights, apparently. Probably. Psst. Yeah, it's like back in the day when I got in trouble and had to go to my room. I liked it in my room. <laughs> Didn't do any good to go in my room. 
Oh no, they rebuilt the robot. David put it back together. Oh, and then they built the cardboard Alicom robot. Oh my goodness. That is the fakest looking thing ever. It looks like something out of a cross between a 50s cheesy like, what the hell? It apparently didn't break the other one. Oh, and the Alicom is going to go be the headmaster. So I predicted the headmasters. Hadn't introduced him yet. The headmaster. It's going to become part of the headmaster. That's the aerial box. Yeah. It was a Christmas present. Holiday season 1986. Early 87. I think it says 87 in the story, but it's technically January 87. So, yeah. Because Reunion of the Cities was almost a full year later, and we will get to that. Uh, that one was plagued with, like, problems uh, all the way through. Uh, this one is just kind of a spectacular mess. But in a weird sort of way, there's a weird lens flare thing. And it's got its own sort of... Yeah, there's no Carta yet. Radiates the Carta. Carta were probably just right after this. Early to late winter, early spring. Uh, remember those uh, stripy seventies bed sheets? <laughs> the idea, I guess, being that they're the well, the packed thing kind of got dropped, and they're just sort of just a version of the Autobots and Decepticons. Because we were, and they filmed the wall in. Uh, Oh, is this another set? Could be briefly in the living room there. Shag carpet. I believe that this scene also has David in it. Sounds like it. <laughs> so yeah, I think this scene does, that scene did, uh, what's a flashback to a piece of footage with David and the camera's going I think whenever the, the the image gets clearer, I think you just knew how to make the f camera focus. Just like you put the camera like that. <laughs> and what I was doing. Yeah. Oh man, there's something really wrong with that camera. All tracking's all. Bleep. Yeah, this is this is kind of baffling. He got the Dinobots. That's kind of cool. Slag's already screwed up. His tail broke off. They were too small as well. They should have been the, technically the seven or eight inches tall. Um, not until 2022 did they start making Dinobots the right size. It took that long. <laughs> of course, they're kind of pricey when they're that size because of the plastic thing and the regulation thing. So about 70 bucks for a Dinobot. Uh, they've only made three so far. I think Grimlock and Slag and Sludge. And they can't call him Slag anymore, so they called him Slog because apparently English got mad. Slag is apparently a term over there. Uh, that's bad, I guess. Although the, uh, the Use Awesome Reviews channel says, I don't know why they just don't call him Slag. What's wrong with that? I'm British, I don't care. <laughs> it's stupid, they should just call him Slag. I'm going to call him Slag. <laughs> that's what he's called. So yeah, we, we blew up the robot and rebuilt it as their escape ship. I'm assuming that just after this uh, here is going to be the, going to be all of the, uh, like behind the scenes bloopers and shit, <laughs> which is always fun. Um, yeah, Slag's tail is already broken off, and I don't think I had that toy more than six months at that point. And I made a cardboard tail for it. Yeah, this is near the end of this story, I believe, but there are. Several minutes of bloopers and outtakes on the end of it. A dead duck. Ha ha. Very PG. If not G. Except for the dark stuff about Jetfire wanting to cack himself. Transport. Why would he do that? Just take the Matrix from him. Maybe that's why the, they're all on about the British. Slag hates junk. 
Maybe that's that's what it is. They they start, they saw this fan film years ago on video on the KTS network, and they were like, "Oh my gosh, really?" <laughs> no, I don't think so. But it is it is funny to contemplate that that they just freaked out over over that one little bit, didn't know what to do with it. Repair the Earth by blasting it ties into the Carta story, in which the card is later thought that billions of years went by but no it was just this sanitation ray gun that transformers fired and i did set it billions of years later but i didn't know what i was doing so it isn't really that that's that's retconned it's not really what happened but it's funny that to imply that that is what happened even though it's like oh my god really <laughs> but 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 um yeah uh i said uh, yeah this was originally two hours, an hour and 15 minutes. But it's like, that's because there were some, some bloopers after this that are just really, there, there was like an hour of them. So we got to watch the bloopers and see what I screwed up on. Because if this is this is the as clean as it got, 2012 reprint, wow, oh God. <laughs> and they fly off and this immediately leads into Reunion City. Cast, there, there it is. Oh, it's Tom Brooks and Billy Allen. Yeah, I knew. I thought that was Billy Allen. Yeah. <laughs> Delete. Oh, God. How many minutes of deleted scenes? <laughs> okay, here's a deleted scene involving... Oh, no. It's just going to be random deleted scenes. You can do whatever you want with those. Oh, end credits. That were just awful. The credit maker was later purchased in the in the 1990s. Christmas present during, I believe, um, Christmas Tale 2, 1990. But, yeah, but here, um, yes, I was in Christmas Tale and Christmas Tale 2. Yes, failed child star. Never released pilot. Two, two pilots that were never released. Mm. Although the, the Jung Suwon era started after that and and they had connections with some occasional movies, including those by Ernie Reyes Jr. And they later went on to, uh, there was a ninja movie called uh, Three Ninjas and Three Ninjas 2. And the grandmaster of the Chung Swan, she had a, uh, she had connections with this movie and then they needed extras. So we were extras in that movie background in their private sort of thing. And uh, I got to uh, hear me key upping in the background in, in an actual Hollywood movie. Uh, <laughs> The costume was later put away and discovered, like, dozens of years later. And uh, the belt didn't fit anymore. The belt got lost, actually. So I ordered a new, a new belt on, online later. And it was too small, but I wanted it to be, you know, with the uh, the G1 thing. And I then then uh, got a slightly larger belt for the old, bigger uniform, which is cool. So I have the belt and the uniform from... Marked in the studio things. Failed child star. <laughs> yep, they never wanted us again. Uh, every time a news crew would come over to Pine Hill or something, or come over to a movie or something, uh, they, they would see me being all hyper and not put me on film. But I'm in that movie <laughs> in the background. As long as you're way over there making noises, that's fine. We, yeah. <laughs> but now the um, our YouTube channels have like thousands of videos and... Uh, uh, reviews and things you can see me <laughs> yeah and some people think oh we worked for Disney and Marvel it's like no now if we did there would be more subscribers we don't but, but we knew of some people that did and they no longer do so don't ask <laughs> so here we have uh, these are all outtakes and they're they're just terrible um, that's why they're movie they make the movie more baffling because they are outtakes and they kind of are the plot but the plot such as it is is, is riddled with holes and what was I okay the camera's going pew, 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 pew. why were they trying to make Starscream have more weapons I don't know um I just this is, yeah, this is this is amazing and so stupid on some level. 
old shuttle thing. Cut that out entirely. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what happened there? It's so brief. Uh, I won't go into the other details. But apparently, I was 16 uh, when the when the Challenger disaster happened. And as a teenager in Pinehill, knowing nothing about aerodynamics or anything, thought, why don't they have like an escape shuttle? You know, they can just pop off the top of the shuttle and escape like a rocket, like like a toy rocket ship. No, no, they don't have that. So that's what I was doing. So, a long story short, that's what happened. Hey, look, the space shuttle Challenger escapes to the planet. Now let's put that in the outtakes. That's a little offensive. Yeah. <laughs> so it's on this even even back in the 2005 print. Yeah, let's put that in there. That's all that was. So I thought they could save the next space shuttle by having them have an escape pod. Of course, I was kind of cribbing that from Transformers the movie as well. Uh, and there was an escape pod scene in that movie. So yeah, it wasn't like I thought of that. It's like I ripped it off from the movie. Like, but I thought I thought of it. Oh, I was like, no, no, I ripped it off. <laughs> yeah. That wouldn't work unless the ship was designed to have a escape pod. If it didn't have one, then but there'd be no way to build the space shuttles. It's the size of a jetliner. It's pretty big. You can't really do that. Which made a weird scale issue with, uh, you know, the Combaticons, which were, they had a space shuttle one. And the weird thing with them, yeah, a lot of these uh, these weird combiners were like, was there a space shuttle one? There was like a giant motorcycle a tiny helicopter on on one guy on a defense or there was a giant space shuttle which should be way bigger than all of them huge the space shuttle's huge i saw one and he's you know, gigantic it's fucking huge it's like that thing should be bigger than all the transformers it should be like skylinks you know it's like just his arm should be if, if he's a space shuttle all of them should be bigger uh, like uh, if you built a defense or he'd be like just about 100 feet tall. But yeah, if they had a space shuttle, that thing would be 100 feet tall. So it doesn't make sense. <laughs> but yeah, uh, there was a later uh, NASA disaster, the uh, 2003, uh, was it the Columbia, I think? Columbia broke up. It had like a, an impact on, on their entry. And now they didn't put in a, an escape pod there either. Um, yeah. Mm. So yeah. Um, it was 2000. So here we have uh, the weapons box. I sort of left that out of this print because I'm showing the side of the bed. At least I was trying to make a set, though. I was like, oh, okay, I want to make it wintry, so I'm going to throw this white blanket there, and, and yeah, that'll look good. It's like, no, no, it won't. It doesn't look wintry at all. This is winter. <laughs> what are they doing? Oh, uh, I just, I just, uh, uh this is fun to look back on. I can't say it's completely dumb or anything. It's amusingly dumb or incompetent. I just didn't know what I was doing. So, I said, yeah, here's a red blanket to symbolize the lava or something, ground or mountain or whatever. I don't think we got the mountain set right until the brown sheet from Transdeck. <laughs> That was partly the influence of the actual Hollywood, other Hollywood people that had been on E.T. and Star Wars, the stories, who were like, why don't you go to, like, the, the, the fabric, fabric, fabric shop in San Jose, the Vietnamese shop thing. They have every kind of fabric imaginable and just get space backgrounds and put up backdrops on your space sets so they actually look like, at least it looks like a backdrop instead of a sheet or a blanket. Oh, okay. Yeah, so in our later stuff, in the Chimera in 2019 and that kind of thing. Much later. Oh, we had we had that ability to do the later stuff. So all the stuff after Transtech, we had we had uh, other stuff. We used cardboard sets in Transtech, which worked. There were different colors and things. From, we knew them at that point. So yeah, we miniaturized cardboard sets and things. But yeah, we had to like come up with sets and backdrops that didn't look. Okay, that scale really doesn't work. It did help better when there was uh, somebody holding it. And that's just the light sensitivity is up too high. And uh, uh, these bloopers are funny. 
Uh, it's like just the, the spectacular like level of oh he didn't uh, and then the video goes there's a spectacular level of just we didn't I didn't have any idea what I was doing and that camera was you know shot on shitty it wasn't the camera's not great the camera's crap so so we have this uh, 90 minute movie that's just uh, wow um, I'm watching bloopers so I just want to get to the blooper. Oh, the idea there is that Starscream is going fast. I didn't learn the technique of uh, the streaky lines at that point. You know what you do in animation if you want to make something look like it's going fast, speed rates are fast, whatever, and it's not moving. You draw streaky lines on the panel of the, of the, the so that it looks like it's streaking through the air. So these little lines go, which you can simulate, and then it looks like okay, he's going fast. Yeah. Even though he's not moving, which they did up the nines in Star Trek: Next Generation with the warp warp effect. Same idea. Streaky lines in the background makes it look like it's going really fast, and like in the post group, it's not going at all. It's like on a track, and it's going like two miles an hour. <laughs> well, no, it's at warp. Yeah, uh, sure it is. <laughs> it's going light speed. Yeah. Now the Star Wars people, what they did. Before that, like a couple of years, they had, they had a uh, ten years before that. Is next generation had started. It was on. So I was trying to imitate it, but not not working. They 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 just uh, used moving color wheels and things to like do the warp effect. Poked holes in a big black screen and or drew on the screen the the warp stars and then so the effect of the Millennium Falcon going going is just the yeah the the uh, false perspective stuff with lights, yeah, which I was trying to imitate but wasn't didn't know how they did it, so I just guessed. I didn't know how to do that. I'm going to get away with it. <laughs> what was I? I did, <laughs> the bloopers here are more more interesting than the story, just because they're they're like okay, yeah, that that. Could have worked, but I didn't. Yeah. Oh, there's the dresser again. The dresser pops up quite a lot. Didn't think to film them on the dresser, on the uh, sleeping bag. In the, which would have made more sense, but <laughs> no one came in and said, that's not how you do it. And even if they had, I would have ignored them. <laughs> Because unlike Sheldon and the Big Bang Theory, uh, yeah, we didn't really ha know what we were doing and didn't have a life. <laughs> we just did our own thing. Yeah, like the accurately autistic kid is more like this. It's more like this, accurately autistic kid. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's more like this. This is what you get. This is stream of consciousness weird transformer fan film long before anyone ever did one and there are some others that have imitated it this is 1986 and 87 and holy shit um it definitely is stream of consciousness actually if you took the individual clips which don't but if you did um <laughs> it's and and made them like oh this this is a funky thing swoop did today uh this is a funny funny thing uh Starscream did today with his guns and little little shorts. You, you would end up with YouTube poop shorts. You would end up with vines from Vine. You would end up with that. Transformer vines. Yeah, some of those are very creative. Some of those have stop motion. Some of the some of the newer when they're. I don't think Vine exists anymore, but yeah, the the whole uh, Twitter bait thing. Twitter bait thing. Yeah, you'd have like little 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 vignettes. Uh, one guy that's really good at the Transformer vignette skits is a guy named Imgo the Freaking Geek on YouTube. He does a little sketch at the end of his reviews, and every one of them is funny. They're absolutely, absolutely great. They're just awesome. He did reference us once on his uh, podcast. <laughs> he saw some of our stuff. He's like, yeah. He was all, I just watched. I just watched this weird fan film called Corrosion. War without end. It's, a, uh, it's a fun. It was a fun one. 
like a long version of my sketches, but it went on forever. It was fun. A little long. A little long. Seven one-hour episodes. Go watch it if you want. <laughs> but yes. Um, based on some other guy. Based on this other dude. He just uh, animated it. Yeah, so later on, we did more of this stuff. It's not like we stopped. They're still doing them. Most recently, Transformers Lexicons. Yeah, they're still doing them. They're going to do a Robotech one. They're going to do the Robotech angle on this justice. Why, why are the Robotech people there? Let's show what they were doing. So now we're, we got that. Uh, the, our Sentinels fan film thing, which is yet to come out. 2023, likely, since it's late 2022. You're going to get to see that. Um... Sky Fires Prime. Oh, no, Film Delight. Oh, that's the shag carpet that was in the hallway. That's right. So the little hallway. Yeah. That's supposed to be Cybertron with the gray background blanket. The idea worked. It's just the execution didn't. And, yeah, the background walls. Before the age of posters, of course. <laughs> that worked. Um, yeah. it's like a it's like a hyperactive Asperger, Asperger version of Toy Story except the toys are actually more uh, somehow more realistic than in Toy Story <laughs> and, and darker some of them some of them try to take themselves out to save the Autobots in some kind of martyr thing suicidal martyr complex thing <laughs> what the hell <laughs> what the hell <laughs> oh, it's like it's like the Ed Wood of Transformers. Some of that stuff is really good, though. Some some of them have done like some of them saw our stuff from two thousand, two thousand one, two thousand nine. Some of, some of the later twenty twenty stuff, the the corrosion, the other series and the Mush series. One of them was like, oh, I can totally do that, and I commented on there. I did one of these. But I did a stop motion and I included Road Rage and a bunch of other like ones in it. Watch it. Yeah, I did. It was cool. But you know, it's like he said it took forever. <laughs> like I told you it'd take forever. <laughs> yeah, so he did he did one where um where he used his masterpiece transformers and did like a like the the Decepticons find Road Rage frozen in in the in the Ark, in the Autobot Ark ship and they go out and they yeah, they they rescue her and they try to brainwash her, but she gets out. It's about seven, eight minutes long. Yeah, it's stop motion. It looks cool. I, I suggested that they put the actual sets in the background instead of just just using cardboard boxes because because I've done that and it doesn't look good. But yeah, so there were, yeah, 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 yeah it, was, it, was, it was fun. And that's how long you'd want to make something that's fully stop motion. It, it's only a few minutes because otherwise it's like. No, it takes too long. I didn't do this for a whole year. Oh, I thought I could do it. Uh, I told you it took forever. Anyway, so here's a blue screen. So here we have. Well, these outtakes are amazingly weird and bad. It's an hour of them. <laughs> so yeah, we're just going through the outtakes here, and um, oh my goodness, <laughs> doesn't have to not be necessary. Mostly it's, okay, that's just the camera melting. Then we went on to make Star Crackers with it. About a third of it was usable. To reshoot it later in 2005 and 2011. Some footage we couldn't use at all because we just decided to pipe in music from movies that were better. Don't do that in your fan film either. Yeah, just because the Batman theme sounds cool or the Wrath of Khan theme or the Jurassic Park theme, don't do it. Don't put it YouTube will flag it for one thing, but uh, <laughs> because you're just going to want to stop watching your fan film that you made in your backyard with your friends and watch uh, Jurassic Park. <laughs> yeah, just don't do that. I'm not saying don't do that uh, angrily. I'm saying don't do that. Just don't. It's going to look like shit. So here we have. Oh. Yeah, I can see why these are bloopers because they really, really don't work. And they throw the scale. 
completely off. Even though they're kind of in focus, they're... What are they... Yeah, I probably had the camera on one knee and the robot on the other, as I recall. It's very hyperactive. Done during the break. Yeah. So, yeah. It's still evening. I wonder if most of this was in the course of like two days or something. Like around like the day after Christmas, I think initially, from what I recall. Yeah, like like December 26th and 27th of 1986. But at this point, Tim and I had probably watched the video of Transformers the movie a dozen times, which is insane. And <laughs> but but yes, um, that is the longest uh, running uh, Transformers movie thing yet, which we have watched at least 30 times. To the point of there were like there there were people at the, the later San Jose State in the mid 2000s that said, "Okay, prove it. Can you quote from the movie?" And they like, "Yeah, I can quote from the movie." I do, but yeah, uh, I literally started the opening crawl with the credits and the narration. Okay, yeah, you know, or the Optimus Prime's death scene. Oh yeah, that one. Oh uh, yeah, so. It's, one shall stand, one shall fall. Why throw away your life so recklessly? That's a question you should ask yourself, Megatron. No, I'll crush you with my bare hands. That's not exactly how it went. That's a question you should ask yourself, Megatron. Yeah, yeah, and then he, and then he, he charges him. He goes, no, I'll crush you with my bare hands. Yeah. Out of the way, Hot Rod. Stay away, lad. That's Prime's fight. That was sort of... Stay away, lad. That's Prime's fight. Out of the way, hot rod. Fall, fall. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, it's been years. I saw it last on the 25th anniversary. I own it. But, <laughs> but, but yeah. It's now the 37th anniversary of this? 36, 37? It's been a while. Um, yeah. Almost 40th, is it? 40th? Transformers started in 84. Yeah, it's 38th almost. Holy shit. Wow. Yeah, we never give up on it. You can go to the conventions, the toy shows and things. You can see there are people my age and a little older that are, that are there. And they're selling their Transformer wares or they're selling other people's. And it's a collectible thing now. It's like cool. It's kitschy. Despite the, you know... And despite the Michael Bay movies being cheesy, they did make it mainstream. They made Transformers mainstream in the, the mid 2000s. They brought it back. The Japanese helped too, of course, with their their versions of it. You know, uh, yeah, and it became mainstream for a while. Though there was a glut, and we'll get to it in the 1990s. And I was like, okay, now after the Pretenders, which sucked and didn't make it as a toy line. They kind of died off in America, and, and it became even darker than this. This just has I implications of being darker, but no, Trans Two is is some seriously like not funny shit. <laughs> but but this is such a trans. Um, although although when they torched Optimus Prime on a, bar a hibachi barbecue, that that actually was funny. <laughs> I really wanted to kill him this time. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, that's a famous one. That's that's us. The burning Optimus Prime and the Hibachi. That's us. So if anybody tells you otherwise, that's us. <laughs> Burn Prime. It also became a music video. Burn Prime. That was from Prime Must Die. Trial by Fire was the name of the episode, and we'll get to that. So here we have. I'm just doing commentary tracks. Battle of the Alicom. Since this one didn't have any music over it, I could totally do this one. Slide. Um. Oh, uh, lamp. I could put a lamp up in the hallway. I didn't think of that. Uh, maybe that's okay because the camera's going. This is a little before Carta, it looks like, because the Cartas are more like Legos and some pieces of Carta here. It's actually a little before it. Yeah. Timeline-wise. 
you know, Carter was probably shot a little afterward in March of 87. A little after that. Ooh, the only reason the original aircraft carrier thing was built is because Uncle Bill didn't want to build me an aircraft carrier ship at a balsa. <laughs> so I made my own. <laughs> so come on. That was a little, little much. He didn't build aircraft carriers. He built realistic model boats for the, the boat museum in Duluth. They look great. They they would be they would be spot on like models for, for they, they were a studio quality, but he didn't build aircraft carriers and stuff like that. <laughs> Nothing that complicated. But yeah, if you wanted a movie set on like a like a tanker or something, you know, someone's like going in on the lakes and so, yeah, you could make that back in the day. Yeah, it, it would look like it. I mean, it would clearly be a model, but it would be a really good model. So, yeah. <laughs> No. Yeah. And I had to learn how to do that stuff later. <laughs> oh, Carter and Carter too. Oh, <laughs> reached the epiphany of model making later. Uh, kind of, kind of stagnated a little bit though. In uh, Trans Two, it's the last time we did any Cardas. Really, the Trans uh, Trans Tech. Yeah, Trans Tech. One, two, and three. I don't really do Cardas so much anymore. But fortunately, there are other people that do. And if we ever did a car, a car a new movie, we would use theirs. Because, <laughs> yeah, they're, you can get them. Because, yeah, they, they, the mechanics required for doing that. We thought about using robotics toys when the new different Legos came out. We thought of doing that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Another another MGO the the freaking geek thing uh, the, that's that that mascot is a robotics it's, it's a robotics toy <laughs> so yeah that's what he is um, but yeah uh, he was one of the mush people from back in the day too yeah yeah because 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 you know the, after the first things you appear on in the internet bulletin board services. Tra was uh, Transformers in Star Trek and the old Transformers mush was done in university servers and uh, and they would put them out on the internet go in there and wait for somebody's story to come in and read it and they, their fanfic they usually got kind of shippy and kind of dirty they'd be all like ah and there would be Mary Sue stories constantly and that was just awesome the Robotech thing is a Mary Sue thing too but not as much as some of the other stuff yeah Oh, my Springer fanfic, where I love Spring. They, there was a lot of those, they, they, especially during Wax. Just a lot of Springer fanfic. It was, some of the fans were upset because, like, the end of uh, the shared hallucinations, we killed Springer really, really nonchalantly. Just, like, beat him up and kill him. And they're like, oh, no, no, can't do that. Oh, does that. Yeah, but we're making the third season. Don't worry about it. Your later third season comes out. And he's the main character in the third season. So maybe we brought him back. Yeah, we weren't going to kill him. <laughs> so he's in the third season. <laughs> the toy broke. So we're basically, well, let's just say he's dead. <laughs> the broken toy appears in the pilot of Lexicons and they rebuild him as the, as the Earthrise one. And I thought the Earthrise guy wasn't actually the real guy. We were talking to the Primal Prime guy, but it turned out he was. And they apologized, of course. Uh, yeah, it actually was him. Holy shit. But yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. Yeah, there's this. It didn't seem realistic that they would call that guy over in New Jersey, but apparently he did. Um, I've I've never really interviewed directly a uh, a creator of the Transformers. Um, really, um, there was an encounter with a bit Frank Welker back in the day. Mention. Um, well, he said. Well, as he said of my Transformer Megatron voice, "Well, I'm not out of a job yet." <laughs> but yes, um, <laughs> but but yes, <laughs> um, but we did meet Carl Mayshek from Robotech at the, the convention years ago in the '90s, uh, eight, late '87, around this time period, actually, and we uh, hawking uh, the Sentinels, and the Sentinels books never got produced into a Sentinels Robotech series spinoff. But, uh, yeah, I, I have created one using elements of other fan film stuff from the lexicons. So I don't own lexicons at all. I just trip their stuff. And I'm going to, like, uh, do their do the Sentinels, Sentinel stories. 
Next, next, Robotech. Uh, not from the Masek ones because they're copyrighted, but rather fanfic versions of them that were originally Transformers stories. So it's Transformers meets Robotech, but now Robotech meets Transformers. And yeah, so that's what we're doing. And uh, now, but I'm just talking just smacking shit about what am I doing now. But, uh, here we have a scene down in the living room with the couch. So there's like these weird vistas of sheets and things. And they blow up the earth or something. I did try to clean this up. There's like 40 minutes of bits where I did clean it up. But you still kind of can't tell what's going on. Uh, and these are bloopers and they're hilarious. <laughs> Because, yeah, if you're going to, like, do this, don't hold them with your fingers in front of the camera. Don't do it that way. Stop motion or go motion. Don't hold them with your fingers. But sure, if you're, like, 17 and you're, like, 17 with the mentality of probably an 8-year-old uh, <laughs> at this point. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You can forgive the, the lack of video quality. Of, uh, the, the mad genius is in there. Where they're going and uh, how that was put together in the ship crashing and all that. Uh, the, 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 the genius is in that. It, it doesn't make sense, but it's just a fan film. The mush didn't make sense either most of the time. There's hundreds of them out there and Maybe thousands. And they've made newer ones. There have been generations that have made newer ones. Yeah. Yeah, Corrosion of War Without End. I should probably mention that. It's supposed to be Rob Powers watches this. Yeah, it's Rob Powers' story. And I just did an animated version of his story. Don't know him. But I did an animated version out of his uh, story. Changed some of the character names around. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Sort of a novel, really. <laughs> No, that was okay because that movie the freaking geek. He made a, he made the other that that uh, King Grimlock, fan film story. Some a lot of people have done that one or uh, different versions in the Slagmaker story as well. Did a King Grimlock special. Put them all in there. <laughs> since there have been scores of new ones since the the glut of the '90s and they haven't stopped. Doesn't look like there's going to. Although there, currently there is a little bit of one because the current ones are kind of cheap. And there's Earth Spark, which is a new show. Yeah. That's kind of getting near it. Yeah, and Earth Spark looks like Rescue Bots, so it's a kitty show. So was the new Bumblebee one from a couple of years ago. More like years ago. They're trying to make it a serious adult collector show. Oh. Well, you guys, you guys got that. Transformers Prime. Yeah, Welker and Cullen were back. Yeah, you know, your serious collector show. So you did get it. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah. Not so much Transformers Animated, which was Teen Titans with Transformers. Not so much with that. Although well, that they'd have a third season that never aired until like later on in video. Yeah. And a fourth season that was canceled. I think the longest run any Transformers series ever was was well the G1 one they did like 100 episodes all together including the 30 some that they did for set in 2005 2006 and then fudged when Prime died to say he'd been dead for years you know at most he'd been dead for a year maybe two barely a year before they had to bring him back in the return of Optimus Prime the return of Optimus Prime Da -da -da -da. Yes, and uh, of course Michael Bay immortalized us, or at least Mark's hearts, in his uh, later later reinvented Marky Marky Mark uh, episodes, uh, the uh, Age of Extinction and the Last Night, by including him this character as Cade Yeager, named after Mark's cards, his real last name. So, so the Cade Yeager. I was Adinger, but I wasn't the actor playing him. They should have got me. I would have done it. <laughs> but you'd have to name him Strawberg, of course. 
and March Cards are requiring it. So, yes, they include Strawberg in, in Rise of the Beast, so it's just the new one coming next year. Uh, yeah, they'll. <laughs> but the Bumblebee movie was awesome. Yeah, uh, that was that was spot on. They went back to their roots and said, "Okay, Steven Spielberg type ET thing, but with Transformer." There, that's what you do. That was awesome. That opening battle scene on Cybertron was like, oh shit, yeah, it was awesome. Heck yeah, it was awesome. So yeah, um, Decepticons attack. I do a better sound wave than I do a Megatron. <laughs> anyway, so, so yeah, your sound wave is pretty good. Hmm. But your friend Jim, he did a better Megatron. Yeah, Megatron. Anyway, so yeah, this Battle of the Alicom. Battle of the Alicom. Not sure why they were fighting the Alicom robot, except it was kind of like Unicron, I guess. That's Starscream went on the ship too. Ooh. <laughs> Ten months later, reunion in the city. So yeah, this, this has been uh, Battle of the Alicom, and it predates Carta and Carta Two, apparently. Yeah. So, <laughs> and the blast that's at the end of the story ties into Carta because they think it's billions of years later. It's not. It's insane. But they had to retcon that in Carta Two. Just said, oh, they thought it was, but deity shows up and smacks him around in the deity because it's supposed to be the regent but I didn't explain that yeah but I do the regent justice in, in the new ones keep referencing Robotech I hope it comes out because I keep referencing <laughs> and I'm going to grab them off the floor the, the lava base thing I would build elaborate bases especially in the backyard once you did the backyard stuff I'd build the elaborate base only to destroy it immediately afterward. I think the music is actually playing right here. Oh, God. I don't think it'll be a problem, though, because the touch is not really copyrighted. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think. Yeah. I, I mean, it is, but YouTube doesn't care about that one. Because it's not UMG. And it's really grainy. I doubt it's going to. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That doesn't make any sense. So I had the audio, apparently. The audio tape of it. And I had the record. It's probably the record. <laughs> Lion, Spectre General. They made up a bunch of names because the rock bands didn't want to be associated with it. The <laughs> Spectre General. <laughs> yeah. But Stan Bush, he didn't care. He's like, yeah, I'll, I'll just Stan Bush. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah. Battle of the Alicom. Holy shit. <laughs> Tremendous steaming pile. But yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. Battle of the Alicom. We're probably going to just not use this last two seconds. But we'll see. Battle of the Alicom. What? That's my hand. Come on. <laughs> this is blue. Transformers more than meets the eye. Oh, great. Disguise. Bleep. That's it. 